What's up fixers, Justin with Fix My PEV. Today I'm gonna to be walking you through another simple how-to. This will be how to remove the controller PCB from the one wheel pint and the one wheel pint X. And when I say the PCB, I just mean the inner control board and not the entire enclosure. So I'll be walking you through this process. This is an original pint right here. The process will be fairly identical with the exception of a slightly thicker bumper on the pint X, but the enclosures are exactly the same on the pint and pint X. The controller PCB on the inside is the exact same format, exact same mounting screws and all that stuff. So I'll be walking you through the process on an original pint, but this will work on the pint X as well. So the first thing I wanna let you guys know is the tools that we're gonna to need today. Number one, we are going to need a TP20, which is a Torx plus 20 bit for the standard screws. And you can also get away with a T20, just a standard Torx 20, that will also work. It's not that important with these regular screws. You will also need a TS20, which is a five point security Torx. That's gonna allow us to get into the controller enclosure because the top of the lid has a bunch of security Torx bits or screws on there. We're gonna use the Torx bit for that, security Torx. And once we get inside of the controller PCB, we will also need a number one Phillips bit. That's gonna help us free the PCB from the enclosure. And some sort of little pry tool is a good idea. Not metal, if you can help it, but I do actually have a metal flathead screwdriver that I've taped up with some electrical tape, and you'll see exactly why later. We just don't want metal on metal if we wanna protect what we have there. That enclosure is aluminum, and I believe it's just painted, so you don't wanna chip it off if you can avoid it. So other than that, we will actually need a 16 millimeter socket. That's gonna help us take off one of the plastic nuts for the foot pad. And then for the motor, and honestly, sometimes you can get those off by hand, but for the motor, I generally end up having to use either a crescent wrench, which is gonna be hard to get in there since we're not taking the enclosure out, or I will just use just some regular pliers. Wanna be as careful as possible not to scratch anything up or damage anything. We'll see when we get there. But with all that said, those should be the only tools that you really need to get into all of that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in and show you the process. So I'm gonna start by removing the screws for this fender delete. So I'm just gonna do that real quick with the TP20. Then we'll go ahead and remove the fender delete. I like to push through from the bottom. Once it's loose, it should be able to get it past the mag handle and just set that aside. If you've got any dirt or anything built up, this is a perfect opportunity to clean some of it up or not, up to you. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and flip this thing upside down. And I'm gonna take out the six TP20 screws, two in the nose here, two in the other part of the bumper here, and then two close to the tire. All of these go into, well, these ones go through the bumper into the foot pad. These ones go through the bumper into the foot pad as well. And then these ones actually go straight into inserts on the bumper. Sometimes these ones are a little stubborn. They're gonna come out just fine, but when you're lining them back up, sometimes they don't wanna line up properly. So just be careful. These two here, sometimes you have to flip the board upside down to get to them. Sometimes I can get lucky and just kind of angle the bit here. Get them out far enough, just like that. This really helps to have the TP20 for it because the T20 usually doesn't work too well when trying to pry these out. And this one may not come out anyway. Sometimes the plastic is a little damaged and it keeps that screw from coming out. There we go, got it. So now that those are out, what I like to do is I like to use the tire as a little bit of leverage and put my fingers here, my thumbs there. You can see, I'm just gonna push on the tire and push the bumper away with my fingers. And after you do that a few times, you can pull it right out. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect the foot pad connector. If you can't get it by hand. I didn't mention these earlier, but you can get away with using some needle nose or long nose pliers. Just don't squeeze very hard. You don't need that much force. If you have one of these fancy little tools from Future Motion that will fit right on there, you can use that too. Same goes for the motor connector on the pint. You can actually use the foot pad connector wrench from an XR to loosen that. That's only if needed. So I'm gonna to try to do it by hand. 
and I got it. So I'm just going to pull that out of the way. So those are now freed. Take another opportunity to get some of this dirt and dust out of the way. I like to do this because it just makes the cleaning or the surface, I don't know what I'm saying. It makes my workspace a little bit cleaner as I'm opening things up, especially when I'm opening sensitive enclosures like this. So I like to dust things off as I go. I'm gonna flip it back over now. And I am going to remove these two screws here on the foot pad. And then the foot pad should just lift right up. Since we already disconnected it, it's not locked in anywhere. Set that thing aside. Time to get ready to take off the enclosure cover here. Give myself a little bit extra help with this dirt in the crevices. The last thing I really want is for the dirt to fall inside of this when I open it. So that's why I'm doing that again. All right, so this is the part where we need the TS 20 bit. We're gonna take off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so now that we have all of the screws out of the enclosure cover, we need to go ahead and take this cover off. Keep in mind that the stock gaskets on the Pint, Pine X, GT, GTS, they are notorious for sticking to the lid when you go to take the lid off. They are slightly oversized in a lot of cases. I don't know if it's because they've swelled or if they were oversized when they were put in. Future Motion, when they have these things assembled, assembled usually will put a little bit of grease to keep it in the groove. So that might help if it's still there, but just be careful when you're taking it out to not pull it off of, or pull it out of its groove too much. What I generally try to do as I'm going through this is I will use a little card or something. I don't really have anything nearby. So I'm just gonna kind of go through this and hope that it's not that bad. But I like to pry it just a little bit and start seeing if it's actually sticking. And it's not in this case, so I'm just going to go ahead and move this out of the way. That one went very well. The gasket is still seated. I'm not going to touch the gasket. There is a little bit of dirt here at the front that I'm going to go ahead and take care of using a toothbrush. Clean off the dirt on the top half of the lid, too. There's not a whole lot, but there's some. And I'll set that thing aside. Get this little dirt away from here and I'm doing this very lightly because I don't want to disturb the gasket too much here. The gasket seems to be doing its job there. The dirt's on the outside of the gasket. That's nice. I do always like to look around here to see if there's any excess dirt or moisture or anything like that that, th that would tell us maybe that the foot pad and motor connector nuts weren't tightened down adequately. Sometimes that does happen with the GT but since we're looking at the pint today that's no problem here. One other thing to note if you have an older pint with a metal nut, which would normally be silver in color, this one looks like one of the plastic ones, which is great. Sometimes that will actually break the threads of the power button and it will dangle and it will hit your Bluetooth low energy module right here. And that causes problems. Also, if you have that metal banging around, it could potentially short something else out. Usually it's just the Bluetooth module because that's pretty much all the play that it has, but you never know. Sometimes it can rip this up and then you'll have a nut just banging around in your controller box and that's not good. So hopefully you have one of the newer plastic ones. If you don't have one of the newer plastic ones, fun fact, this power button is the same on the Pint, Pine X, GT, and GTS. And Future Motion does actually sell replacement power buttons. So if you want a plastic nut and you can't find somebody with an extra power button nearby, then you can actually order a power button that will come with another nut from Future Motion directly and you can go ahead and replace yours. So just a fun fact. What I am going to do next is I am going to remove this XT60. That's the first thing I'm going to do. What I like to do is I like to put my hand on the underside of the enclosure. I like to put my thumb on what would actually be the male side of the connector, which is what this is connected to. And I will lightly grab these. I'm not going to really tug these much, but I'm going to be using it for control because I don't want this to slip out and bang anything else in the area. I'm going to go ahead and push with my thumb very carefully. It's almost out and it's out and I'm just gonna leave that out of the way. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the data connector here. That's this guy with the colorful wires in it. Squeeze the tab and pull up, and that's great as well. I'm also going to remove the power button connector right here. Same thing, squeeze the tab, pull up, and then also the LED light bar connector right here. Squeeze the tab, pull up. So those are all removed. 
The next thing I want to do is going to be a little bit harder for you guys to see is I'm going to remove the plastic nuts that are on the exterior of this controller for the foot pad and the motor. So probably not going to be able to get them by hand, but I'm going to try. Oh, that one was a little bit loose. So I guess I did foot pad one fairly loose. I'm just going to put that away in a safe place for now. And let's try the motor connector and see if that one's on there a little bit better. It was on there a little bit better, but it was still only finger tight. So I will make sure that those are adequately tightened when I put this back together. Now that the plastic nuts are off, this is the part where we need our number one Phillips bit. We're going to go ahead and remove one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so all six of those screws have been removed. Those are the ones that are holding the PCB to this enclosure. And this is where we need our prying tool. I know that I said that you can use something that's plastic. This may or may not get the job done because this is actually being held down a little bit by the thermal pad underneath these MOSFETs. So this whole section here on the underside of this PCB, there's a thermal pad. It may stick to the PCB and it may stick to the enclosure, but we'll go ahead and see here. I'm gonna go ahead and use my flathead screwdriver that has the electrical tape around here because this is exactly where I like to put it, this top corner and right underneath this spot where one of the screws was at. And I'm just gonna gently pry upward and it popped free. So that's literally all I needed it for. You don't wanna crank on it. You just wanna do it lightly until it pops free, just like it did for me. And then I like to grab the XT60 up here because it's a solid solder thing. Don't wanna grab these capacitors. I know it's tempting because they're right there but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the XT60 and I'm also gonna push on the motor connector here to kind of help myself guide this out of here. If your LED wires get in the way, just kind of pull them out of the way a little bit. I feel comfortable grabbing this little daughter board as well that holds the connectors because it's also pretty solid, but I'm just gonna gently wiggle it and try to try to get it to come free here. Being a little bit stubborn, probably because of that thermal pad. There we go. So I'm going to carefully pull it out, making sure to clear all of these other wires. And you can see that thermal pad I was talking about right here. This one stayed on. That's great. But that's literally all there is to removing the PCB from the Pint and the Pine X. It's actually very similar to doing the GT and GTS as well with slight differences. So if you were wondering how to remove that, then that's exactly how to do it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out, drop a comment below, contact me on fixmypev.com. I will be happy to help as much as I can. Until then, keep fixing.